Hi everyone, um, I just want to spend a moment at the start of this video to just um, say thank you for a thousand subscribers. Uh, honestly, unbelievable. I'm a little bit late to the party, but that's because uh, I've just started uni again and things have been busy, so making videos does take a little while. Uh, whether it's to get the motivation together to actually do it, or whether it is to actually just record it, 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 the upload schedule may fall off just a little bit. But I am still alive, still gum, still coming. Um, oh God, that's a bad way of phrasing that. But uh, yeah, thank you from the bottom of my heart for a thousand subscribers. Um, I've actually managed to hit the monetization boundary for my channel, and uh, I've earned a whole pound. Uh, off this <laughs> one, one whole unit of currency. So that is insane. Uh, the fact that I have anything to my name from this after nine years is absolutely mind boggling. And I cannot thank you enough. Um, yeah, I, I've just got a big dumb grin on my face <laughs> and, uh, it's all thanks to uh, you guys, basically. Uh, you guys have been responding so well to these videos, and the algorithm notices. Uh, and so the algorithm recommends. I've had uh, comments from people who are like, I watched one video and it won't stop recommending you to me now. And I'm like, ah, that's what I want. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, thank you so much. And uh, on with the, uh, the interesting video. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Will, and welcome back again to a <laughs> very low uh, field of view sprocket video, apparently. Uh, looks like I have not changed the settings back from when I was uh, taking some screenshots. Anyway, um, <laughs> today we're going to be doing something a little bit different, and I'm going to be basically coming up for, with a tank design for a nation that never had tanks. So, today it's going to be Danish tanks is what I'm thinking of, um, and obviously this comes with a few inherent problems such as Denmark not having advanced strategies for tanks, Denmark not having the technical expertise or heavy industry to build tanks, Denmark not having previous experience with tanks and not really having the tech, you know, the know-how on how to train an army to use tanks, not having the time to build tanks, uh, not having the resources necessary to build tanks. Basically, uh, it would never happen, is what I'm saying. But if we ignore all of that, we're going to have essentially a tank that is built with light industry methods and kind of cheaply constructed. So I'm probably going to try and put it on like a tractor chassis. We'll see what we can do. Anyway, without any further ado, let's see what I can come up with. Hello everyone, uh, post-commentary Will here, and, uh, so, yeah, this is a bit of a cursed one, actually. Um, this video has been a bit of a nightmare to make, uh, mostly because the tank tracks in, uh, Sprocket don't really work like tank tracks yet, um, if you know what I mean. So basically, they take traction from only the road wheels at the moment, not the idler or the sprocket wheel. So it essentially limited what I could do with the design to something that still had to have the uh, road wheels at the bottom of the design, where realistically, I would quite have liked the road wheels to you know, be the same level as the sprocket, which would be at the front, and then just get rid of the idler. Uh, basically, I was looking at a bunch of old 1940s tractors, the kind of stuff that you would expect um, Denmark to have in this kind of era, and trying to make something that vaguely resembled it. So this was kind of familiar to one of the tank uh, tank tract, uh, tractors I saw, so that's what I based it off. But the problem with this one is that essentially if you try and go over a hill, the sprocket wheels collide with the hill and then you lose all traction to the rear wheels. So it did make it quite painful to actually go through the scenarios with. But in terms of looking funky, I think I ticked all the boxes there. It certainly looks like an interesting design to say the very least. Um, it would be quite nice to come back to this one actually when the... Uh, 
traction has been updated because I'm pretty sure it's something that they're working on quite a lot at the moment. Well, I say they, I, I mean he, um, is working on quite a lot at the moment, trying to get the uh, the traction sorted. Here I tried something a little bit different. I thought I'd, I'd bring it out a bit more because of uh, basically struggling to drive and I used one of the... Um, I don't really know why I used a return roller in the middle. I just thought it would make sense, but it didn't really make much sense. I could have just used another road wheel, but uh, there you go. <laughs> why not? But uh, yeah, it, it was basically a matter of getting a tank that looked unconventional enough that you could believe it was built on a tractor chassis, kind of like a Bob Semple kind of design, uh, but also not so ridiculous that you'd never see it. And I'm not sure if I fully succeeded on the second part. It does look quite ridiculous and it's massive, which is something I didn't really think about while I was building it. I didn't really think about how big I was actually making it. So it ends up quite a lot heavier than I intended. You don't get many for the scenario. Um, and uh, this is one of the first tanks ever that I actually did some testing prior to the, uh, you know, start of the actual gameplay section just because I wanted to make sure that it, it could even move before I tested it. So <laughs> it, it's certainly... Uh, Certainly been a unique process building this one, and uh, I have now learned not to attempt something like this again. Because <laughs> it was a nightmare, at least until they uh, changed traction up a bit. But yeah, this is uh, pretty much the finished product now. Uh, just changing around the uh, tracks to the configuration you'll see for the rest of the video. Just because this worked a little bit better than the other methods. So it's basically what I settled on. Okay, um, one thing I did not realize when I was building this was quite how big I'd made it. Um, in fact, way too big. So, yeah, it's certainly an interesting one. Um, I kind of wanted to make it look like it was built on a tractor chassis. Actually, I should probably move these fenders. Or just get rid of them, to be honest feel like that looks a bit better, actually. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, I think it somewhat looks like a tractor chassis. I, I tried a few different arrangements of wheels, which I'm sure you saw, and a few different, like, weird crew arrangements. Um, driver being in here is a bit of a weird one. Perhaps more realistic, he's actually sitting here. Uh, but uh, couldn't be bothered to put the driver port here, and then the engine would have to go here. So maybe he's here, but he's got a, a periscope to look to the side? I don't know. We'll, we'll pretend it makes sense for the purposes of this. Um, and yeah, it's, it's kind of massive, which is something I didn't really expect to have happen here. But that's not too much of a problem, I suppose. Uh, the turret's traverse is reasonable. I should probably actually have it on um, manual traverse, let's face it. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to take whatever this is out and see what we can do with it. Uh, we've got plenty of space to play around with the internals, so it could definitely be made into something a little bit more effective than what it is, but I kind of wanted to keep to a vague idea and so armor i i didn't want to give myself too much to play with uh, otherwise i could genuinely just make this thing completely dominant uh, i think <laughs> which could be a fun challenge in the future uh yeah it's got a 57 millimeter gun um and before you all shout at me about the crew hatches being on top of the gun i was actually thinking access for the gun maybe perhaps interesting mm. I don't know. <laughs> we'll give it a go. We'll give it a go and see what we can do. And uh, so, yeah, there are a few uh, glaring issues. As you can see, reversing just doesn't work. Um, that's just because of how Sprocket does the tracks, I'm afraid. Uh, it barely works, basically. Um, in fact, we are completely stuck at the moment, which is interesting. This hasn't happened before. Uh, okay, hang on. Um, 
think I have to lift up this rear wheel a little bit more. Annoyingly, I didn't really want to do this because it should really connect to the floor in order to look realistic at all. But, um... Okay, here we go. We're actually able to move this time. Basically, the sprocket doesn't provide any traction if it touches the ground. But I still need one. I don't think the idler wheel does either, so putting that at the back wouldn't really solve the issue. Um, so long story short, we're kind of screwed in terms of mobility uh, just by the nature of how I've uh, done this in a, in a bit of a weird way. Um, but it does move enough, trademark, so we're going to count it as functioning. Um, oh, there we go. The gun's de definitely not bad, and... Hello. Why are you turning around? That's ominous. Uh... Ah. That's why he's turning around. I was right to be suspicious. Have you not killed him? He's on fire. Is he dead? Surely. He looks dead. Oh, we'll say he's dead. For the purposes of, uh... Of this. And uh, move on to fight the big boss boy, who I don't know who it's going to be, actually. Could be anyone, realistically. Uh, that's moving. But I don't think it's alive. I think it's just sliding. I think you're all dead. Unless you turn your turret to face me. We're pretty much solid here. Definitely dead. Definitely dead. Okay. What I've cut out that you didn't see there is the transmission is bloody awful. Um, I'm going to have to change that if we want to take on the Dune scenario. Annoyingly, we've got one of these very armoured French tank destroyer-y thingy Mijigis here. So, uh, hopefully the AI keeps doing what it's doing right now and being unable to aim at me because I don't know if I can penetrate that thing. Uh, or take out its tracks. It does seem to have quite a lot of frontal armor here. However, me and my Im immense six miles an hour are pulling off the great Danish flanking maneuver. He might be too short for me to hit here. <laughs> it, it is a possibility. In fact, a likely one. However, they have provided themselves to me. <laughs> Oh my god, this is absolutely ridiculous. Okay, uh, let's go take on Junes then. <laughs> okay, so we get a few more of them this time, and hopefully the transmission is just a little bit better. Maybe. Looks it. We're getting up to a higher speed. However, hills are always going to be a problem. Um power to weight, not immense on this thing, let's put it that way. Definitely not immense. Uh, however, let's put that aside for now, because we've got enemies to kill over there somewhere. Four. Four enemies? Really? Only, only four. Ooh, or is that four friendlies? Hmm, might be four friendlies. I feel like there'd be more than four enemies on this map. Normally there is. I could be wrong, though. Ha! Ah, there we go. Okay, more of the French tanks we've got to fight here. They can be penetrated by our guns, but I imagine they can go through us as well. So we can't get too complacent here. Finally got over that hill. It did take me a little while. I don't know what my allies are doing, but whatever they're doing, it's utter chaos. Uh, we don't have much gun depression either, which is something we have to take into account while we're on the old dunes. Uh, here we're going to get some flanking shots on some of these Mark 1s. There goes another one. We're three down now. Uh, far range one here. Well, not far range, but okay. Back off, back off. This is... Not a great situation to be in. We've got two shooting at me from different sides. Let's get frontal armor face towards this one and take him out as he comes down the hill, hopefully. That's at least immobilized him. I imagine he's still going to be shooting. 
Ooh. Okay, we're on fire. We are pretty much out of this fight, but we won't go down without an fight. There we go. An fight has been done. And oh my. That is, uh... That's a big boy. Okay, it's gone. Just got a couple of Mark 1s left to kill, I think. Two friendlies, if, we're that, if that's what we're assuming that number 2 means at the bottom right. Uh, he's gone. Who is still going over here? There's one on the right there, moving quite quickly. Uh, another Hennemore over there. Just taken out our last ally. So it's us versus the world. The Danish tank that could. Okay. Come on, Mark 1. Show yourself. As I slowly show myself to you. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh. uh. Ha! Got him. Right. Got the Hennemore over there. Seems to be a bit of a monster, that one. Let's see what we can do. Ooh. Okay, it's got the side of its turret face towards us. That makes things a lot easier. A lot easier. There's another tank miles away in the distance there. They've bounced off twice. We've got them. That's certainly useful. And we've been hit in the back. Oh, what a crying shame. Hello. Welcome back. Um, sorry for the potentially short nature of the start of this video. I wasn't particularly enjoying designing a tank within the limitations of trying to make it as tractor-like as possible. Uh, just the fact that the sprocket was touching the ground ruined the traction and all that. Um, but I've come back. I've done a couple of modifications, as you can see. Added some machine guns to the side. Tracks are a little bit more conventional as a tank goes. Uh, that shouldn't be in there. <laughs> There we go. We'll just move that out slightly. Um, so this should work quite a lot better. Uh, I've increased the size of the engine just a little bit to make it a little bit quicker. Uh, but the gun, the turret, uh, the gun mechanism is all the same. We now have one more crew member and each of the crew members have a little bit more space inside the tank. It is a little bit heavier, but it was quite heavy to begin with. Um, I haven't made it any smaller, but if I were to remake this tank fully, that that is probably what I'd do. Um, it does feel a little bit big. But... With that said, since we failed the Dunes mission before, and I kind of gave up, uh, here, we're, here I am, gonna do it again. <laughs> this time, we will not be defeated. So as you can see, uh, the mobility is not great, but it's better. Um, <laughs> which is which is important to note, considering last time it could barely get up even the slightest of hills. So it, it is quite useful that it can now do so. And, uh, yeah, ultimately, I'm, I'm actually, I've grown on this. The times that I've been away from it, I, I didn't like it when I first made it. And since I've been away, I've actually come to kind of like it in a weird Bob Semple kind of way. It very much gives me the, the, the feeling of a Bob Semple tank. Just because it is so unnecessarily large for what it is. Uh, and it, you know, it's got... Little to no real-world effective uses, but in this game, anything is possible. So <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna force Danish tanks to rule the world through nefarious means, and I think we've missed that. I think that's the new STRV um, pre-built. Uh, that's a Hen Hennemore, uh, and I've learned we can go straight through the front of that thing, so they're not as scary as I thought they once were. There goes an STRV2. Uh, we've got someone on the left there. It looks like my ally is going to deal with him. I should probably deal with these flanking guys on the right because I doubt my allies will. So I don't know how far away they are. Clearly a little bit more than that. But we should be able to get the shots ranged in shortly. Uh, the gun's accuracy isn't stellar. So we'll go for this guy who's just a little closer. And you do have to bear in mind with this thing the gun is to the left of the site, right? They've gone below, below the hills now. So if I return my efforts to the front, I'm quite liking this as a bit of a sniper of a tank. Um, I think that's dead already. So we've wiped out half the enemies. Um, 
I think that one on the left is still going to be alive. Uh, Got to find our shooting spot. Because right now, I feel a little bit useless. I'm a bit be behind everybody else, and they're getting all the action. So let's uh, let's push up a bit and see if we can um, get our own slice of the pie here. We've got someone in the distance there, who I'd imagine is still alive. And a couple flanking behind which I think we can take out. It looks like we've lost one of our tanks at the moment. Uh, the armor on these things isn't particularly great. It's not awful. Um, I think it's about 25 millimeters, maybe 30 on the front. So not a crazy amount. Definitely uh, something that can be dealt with by a lot of the AI tanks at this tier, but also enough to bounce a shot if you have a slight bit of angle on it, um, especially from these early war tanks. So some of these guys are still alive. Perhaps just one or two. Um, and it's now just a matter of... Oh! Finding out which ones they are. And it looks like my ally has done that quite effectively. Now, uh, that was quite easy. So what I'm going to go do now is we're going to return to the... Uh, ambush mission we're going to redo that with the modified version of this tank as well uh, and then finally <laughs> i will set you free and you can go about the rest of your day without watching any more of my videos <laughs> but until i finish ambush you're not allowed to leave okay here we go so the situation as it stands is that because of the limited weight in this map we actually only have me i'm the only one so I've kind of got to pull my weight quite heavily here, or we could be in trouble, as there is no AI to carry me through here. We've been penetrated on the left, taken some damage to the radio operator and the driver. We're moving a little bit slower now. I've loaded the APHE in the hopes that going through will actually kill them in one shot all the time, which it has there. Um, but there are a lot of them, and this gun is not the best thing in the world. Uh, but what do you expect? This is a Danish tank. <laughs> Let's see if we can... Oh, he's... He's he's uh, he's got behind the hill there. And there's another one poking on the left. I can probably take this guy out here. Not if we bounce like that, though. There we go, gone through. And this other guy behind the hill... We just got to wait for him to poke his head out, which he will, I think, in a second. On the left-hand side of this hill here. There he is. We're going to just give it another second, get a better shot. There's our shot. Okay, and we got him. So I think that just leaves the boss at the top of the hill. So I will uh, probably skip the, uh, the long drive up. Okay, we got a Henamore at the top here, so we have proved we can go through this thing in the June scenario, so I'm not actually too intimidated by this thing. <laughs> and hence why I am not too intimidated by the Henamore. Um, <laughs> that was perhaps a little too easy. So we've gone from abject failure to thorough success with this tank that was meant to be a, uh, a light industry you know, easy to produce tractor-based chassis and has ended up being a ridiculously heavy, <laughs> weirdly effective tank. But, uh, sure, I guess, I guess it works. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed this one, please have a like. Favourite? Is that even a thing anymore? <laughs> I don't even know. Please have a like, comment, and or subscribe. And, uh, whether favourites exist or not, uh, maybe favorite it in your heart. And I will see you in the next video. Um, yeah. Toodles.